Hey guys, Kyle Davis here, and in this video I want to talk about the, the concept of mind and body and how it relates to our, our health and our well-being and where it fits in with the kind of idea of stress. And the reason that this is important is because if you suffer from a, a fatigue or a pain condition or even a stomach and bowel condition and you are looking at the mind and body as being separate entities, as is very much the case, you look at things as being physical or psychological or mental, then you, you'll want to watch this video because what we need to do is to understand, firstly, is it, is it true? Is there a separation between the physical and the psychological, the body and the mind? Uh, is that true? Also, we need to look at, well, where does that come from? Why do we seem to entertain this, this theory? So if we go back and look at the origins of the, the concepts of mind and body, even back in the times of Aristotle and Plato, they talked about the psyche. And the psyche was meant soul, and it was the kind of connection with, that we had with kind of God and all that is. So it was the special part of, of being human. And in, even in the early sciences, there was a notion that everything, all matter, came from the soul. So be it plants, be it animals, be it humans, everything had this kind of non-material soul and the material came from that, the structure, the shape of flowers and bodies and whatnot, emerged from having a soul. Then there was something of a paradigm shift within, within science where the, we began to see the beginnings of materialism. And this was with people like René Descartes. And the idea was that uh, there is, we, we are just matter. And the, there is, the soul is, is not the cause of that matter. Matter is kind of there. But because these early scientists were also Christians, there needed to be something different about humans. So animals and plants could be seen as soulless. They were just particles. They were just materials that kind of worked together like machines. But humans were different. Humans had that connection with God. And because they were Christians, they needed to maintain, uh, need to put forward a concept, a notion whereby man was somewhat different. So what we saw was that the psyche, the soul kind of merged into, into the notion of mind. So we had psyche, soul, mind, and this was what made man different from everything else. This was kind of ethereal, nondescript to a certain extent. Certainly not something particularly tangible, but definitely not material. So we had our material body, which was kind of like a machine, mechanistic, a bit like the plants and the animals. And then we had this mind which connected in with soul. So that was the the modern day origins and it was a world view it was a perspective it was a way of trying to uh, explain new theories that they were seeing in science uh, and, and, the, and matter and how the, the building blocks of matter existed but also because they were christians of maintaining that connection with god now as we've seen science develop the part of the key thing of, of the, the notion of materialism is to try to eradicate God from the equation altogether. So what we see is this no notion of a random purposeless universe, like a, like a big, big machine, a big kind of clockwork machine that kind of ticks over. And we are sort of, as Richard Dawkins says, lumbering robots playing out our genetic blueprint. And of course, what happens then is that we've still retained this notion of mind, but because the soul is now out of the picture, mind is just something psychological. But the, that split of mind and body has still remained. It's kind of just hung around like, like a bad smell. But is it true? Well, kind of interestingly, even though we've hung on to this notion of physical and mental or body and mind as being separate entities, what, it, what science is showing is that actually they're not separate. They are connected. They are one. And this is probably most, certainly most relevant to us when it comes to health and healing when we're talking about the idea of stress. Now, most people think that stress is that agitated, uncomfortable feeling. 
Whereas, in fact, stress is a, a measurable set of biochemical events, objective and measurable within the body, within the mind and the body, within the brain and the body. And they are, when the body goes into a state of stress, your conscious awareness may not necessarily be uh, tuned in and aware to the fact that your body is in the stress response. But there are a whole series of things that can create the exact same stress response. So you could have a, a car accident, a physical injury. You could have a bad case of flu. You could have a breakup in a, in a, a relationship, an emotional trauma. And with all of those, the stress response in the body is exactly the same. So what, from the perspective of healing and health and the, the presence of symptoms, the idea that I like to talk about with clients is that, keeping it simple, is that the idea that we have a stress bucket and everything that is in our life, almost like a combination lock of causes, go, can potentially go into that stress bucket. So if you're having a lot of alcohol, if you have a bad diet, even strenuous exercise can trigger the body into the stress response. As I've said, you know, in, if you're having an injury, if you're having an illness, even lack of sleep can trigger the body into the stress response. Emotion is the biggest because the, the biggest contributor because there is there's a drip feed of emotion that we can kind of tune out to. We can be in our thinking brain and tuned out from the fact that there is emotion that's present within our brain and body. But when that level gets full from potentially all of these things, then the overflow triggers symptoms. So stress is the key example where mind and body are connected, where there is no distinction, there's no difference between uh, something, some emotional issue, which could be a drip feed of something very small, or it could be something significant, you could lose a job. That's no different from having a very bad diet in terms of the, the stress as your body feels it, and possibly inflammation within the body as well. There's a lot of talk about the gut microbiome and the connections between brain, heart and gut all impact each other. So stress within the body is ultimately what's going to be causing disease. And this notion that something is either physical or psychological is an old paradigm. And it's not only not useful, it actually just gets in the way and prevents us from really understanding what's going on. So we really need to embrace this notion that brain, body, mind, body are one. Symptoms can manifest in different ways. You can have psychological symptoms, you can have physical symptoms. Something can appear in your head and something can appear in your body. But ultimately they are connected everything affects everything else when we're looking at chronic health challenges chronic fatigue chronic pains chronic digestive or gut problems there is a combination lock and we cannot look further than emotions being one of the key issues one of the key factors one of the key pieces in our stress bucket so i hope that's useful given an insight into simplifying the idea that mind and body are one and a full stress bucket is going to lead to symptoms.